This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. As we navigate into yet another year of uncertain and not quite normal times, we here at CinemaSins want to remind you to prioritize your mental health. That's why we wholeheartedly recommend BetterHelp. It's an online therapeutic resource that will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, all from the comfort of your home. To get started, head to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins to answer a few questions about your state of mind, and before you know it, you'll be matched with a therapist who will work with you. Oh yeah, and you also get 10% off your first month when you click that link below. Now, on to the show. Get it? It's like deja vu. Get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? No, Lieutenant. Your men are already dead. Hey, I remember that line from The Matrix. Some nice, fun nostalgia for this first scene, and then it's on to something new, right? Right? Also, we find out later that Neo created this modal for some reason, and it's a sort of video game free-for-all testing area, but Neo didn't ever see this. He didn't even join the story until well after this happened, and Seek and Bugs will say something soon here about knowing this story inside and out, but even that doesn't make sense. The only way they know this story at all is if Neo put it in his famous video game, which again, how does he even remember these events so well when he wasn't there? Or the original story was being recorded by the machines as it happened, and humans found some way to access the files, and underground copies of that video circulated and became legend. Either way, sounds like bull to me. F***ing even if Trinity told Neo this story later in life, she wouldn't know what the cops on the street said to each other. Camera checks breaking up, switch to audio. He doesn't switch to audio. The video remains fine, and this is never mentioned again. As pointless as this tension is, she might as well have said, you're late. We know what happens next. She kicks that ass. Putting the commentary track inside the actual movie. What? I know this is a computer code world, but she just literally went Sue Storm. Also, if she can do that, why did she wait until now, and why doesn't she do it again any time later? How the hell did he know to come directly here? Is this the only other door on this street after the hotel? The hell? We like the boy found the story of my life. I mean, is that surprising? The more I listen, the more I hear. The more I touch, the more I feel. The more I eat, the more I sh Am I profounding correctly? I am. Morpheus. There is zero reason this version of Morpheus couldn't have been played by Fishburne. I mean, other than money or the almighty scheduling, which usually just means money. Morpheus being younger here and even a nanobot in the real world does not necessitate a new actor, but whatever. I'm not sure why this movie is playing in theater one. I get the sense it should be an eight. If nothing else, this movie is teaching me that modern agents, aka goddamn computer programs, can't aim for shit. They can do intricate kung fu moves, but their computer brains are just not capable of aiming worth a damn, apparently. Okay, lots to unpack here. First of all, this is the office of the most famous designer of the most popular video game of all time. This? It looks like the office of an everyday Wall Street bro. Second, the monitor setup on this desk is chaotic neutral at best, but the far top left laptop is virtually unseeable from Neo's current position. Billions of people just living out their lives. Oblivious. Hey, I remember that line from The Matrix. Some nice, fun nostalgia for this second scene, and then it's on to something new, right? Right? I mean, O-M-G. Saying O-M-G like this when saying, oh my god, takes literally no more syllables. It's like taking a shortcut when the difference between the shortcut and the regular route is zero. I'm sure you can understand why our beloved parent company, Warner Brothers, has decided to make a sequel to the trilogy. If you ever wondered at what point self-reference turned into self-parody, I think we've found it. Everything is so on the surface already here that there is no audience reward for exploration or nuance. This movie is going from meta to meta real fast. That's the thing about stories. They never really end, do they? I don't know. The movie Presumed Innocent sure ended. Apollo 13 ended. Hmm. Maybe this is just bad hyperbole. We're still telling the same stories we've always told, just with different names, different faces. The MCU. Thomas, you were a suicide survivor gifted with a powerful imagination. This will not be the last time this movie uses suicide as a direct metaphor for escaping a fake reality. And it will also not be the last time I sit it for doing so. Do you need a refill on your prescription? Yeah. I wish this movie was making a statement about over-prescribing mental health patients who might be treatable with therapy and exercise alone, but it's really just using therapy and drugs as metaphors for prison shackles, which is an outdated way of thinking regarding mental health, and it's pretty offensive, actually. The pills are blue. Get it? Because he took the red pill in the first movie? Do you get it? Do you get it? Ah, taking pills without water or other liquid like some kind of monster. Having Christina Ricci and wasting her in this single scene. Matrix Resurrections making the timely and original point that maybe we spend too much time on our mobile devices. People want us up in their gray space. He just said that in a different outfit in a different scene. So is the movie saying every day is the same but different? 
or are these employees just repeating themselves every meeting? Do these all represent times Neo tried to get out or kill himself, but then got reset? Mindless action is not on brand. And the movie will go on to be mostly filled with uninventive mindless action. There are those who think this movie was made bland and unenjoyable on purpose as a kind of commentary about modern remakes and sequels, when in reality it is a movie that is making a commentary on remakes and sequels that just so happens to also be pretty bland and unenjoyable. Showing me Neo taking a sh** in a public bathroom. If you look up the word subtle in a dictionary, there would be a picture of this movie and the text would say the opposite of this. Obviously, The Matrix is about trans politics. Crypto fascism. It's a metaphor of capitalist exploitation. One of the things I think this movie does really well here is skewer all the self-important philosophical articles and theses written about the original that were just seeing what they wanted to see. And yet, most of the critics, even those who like this movie, seem to think the main theme is about reboots in the iPhone age. Anyway, that's a sin off for this movie regardless. Get it? In the first movie, he said a place had really good noodles. Do you get it? Do you get it? Maybe you don't want to take these pills. I can get down with that. But putting them all down the sink drain is a plumbing nightmare in the making. Just use the trash, man. We need a new bullet time. I do 100% believe WB executives said this at one point. So the sin is for WB executives. We need to revolutionize gaming again. Revolutionize gaming again. Again, I ask, are they just doing the same meeting over and over? Are these all different incarnations of Neo's new reality? I recognize that the repetition reinforces the remake reboot rebukes, but reckon we can receive a reason for it? How do you know if you want something yourself or if your upbringing programmed you to want it? Preacher's Kid here, checking in, and the answer is you don't know, ever. I should get more therapy, but honestly, I'm too goddamn tired. Hmm, weird. This movie has already kind of mishandled therapy by making the analyst a literal gatekeeper for Neo, but here we are again disparaging therapy by making it sound exhausting. And while sometimes therapy sessions can be emotionally draining, depending on the subject matter, the characterization of therapy as something to endure has long been a stigma that keeps people from getting help. Can I ask something about your game? Stop asking if you can ask something! Did you base your main character on yourself? For as much as this movie seems to want to decry nostalgia-based income stream mining, it sure goes heavy on giving us those hits of scenes from the first movie. Can a thing both chastise a thing and be the thing at the same time? If hypocrisy was a business model, don't you think we'd have figured it out by now? My youngest stuck a Lego up his nose. Kids. At last. Hey, I remember that line from The Matrix. Some nice fun nostalgia for this third scene, and then it's on to something new, right? Right? This can't be happening. Do you mean the fire sprinklers? True, they usually have individual heat-based release capsules, so none of the ones in this room should be sensing near enough heat to go off, unless of course they were programmed this way as part of the machine's penchant for cinematic water-based action scenes. Naming the company Deus Machina in the background while the new young Digital Morpheus does impossible sh** to shoot all the bad guys does not absolve you from new young Digital Morpheus being a Deus Ex Machina in this scene. I've missed you. So they hid Agent Smith inside Neo's boss at the video game company? Really? I will kindly sit on my porch every Monday for 20 years waiting for someone to deliver me a good reason why. When the machines rebuilt a new Matrix, Agent Smith ended up as Neo's video game boss. What the ever long f***ing with the hell and goddamn sh**? I heard deja vu outside, opened my door, and there you were. If the machines are trying to keep all this on the down low, why would they name the cat Deja Vu? Are they programmed with an Easter egg delivery directive? Look, real talk, I've done therapy a bunch in my life. At my count, at least six different offices, and none of them ever look like Hannibal Lecter's Federal Hill 5,000 square foot apartment. God damn, this is a huge and pretentious therapy office. How can anyone concentrate with all the ego stroking going on in this room's decor? Even your dislike of my cat made it into your matrix. Wait, I thought you said he came to you after he tried to jump off a building at a party. We can see was clearly thrown after the success of the video game. So how exactly did he name the cat in the Matrix Deja Vu before he even knew you? These machines are sloppy, man. Even when they try to justify their bullshit, they're easily contradicted. There are so many clips from the other films that I swear I would believe you if you told me you can construct the entire Matrix trilogy from the flashbacks in this movie. I fly or I fall. Using suicide as an explicit metaphor for escaping a fake reality again. There was a window washer outside the office when Neo was getting in trouble in the first movie, so I guess literally everything has to be the same in this movie. They don't look like typical Asians. They use bots now skinned as normal people. And with that, the movie gives itself permission to mow down as many human appearing people as it pleases, since they aren't real humans, you see? And that when I did, you would be ready for this. Tattoo of a rabbit from a game that millions of people have played? How is this supposed to build trust? For all he knows, you're a stalky, stalky fangirl. We don't have to run to phone booths anymore either. Mostly because mirrors are more metaphorical and cinematic and phone booths don't exist anymore, but yeah, technology! Nothing comforts anxiety like little nostalgia. Eh!
Try therapy and meds. Thanks for playing. You think you know mental health. We will see everyone next time when Captain America says nothing defeats fear and PTSD quite like optimism. Time is always against us. Hey, I remember that line from The Matrix. Some nice fun nostalgia for this. You know what? This is going to happen a lot, so let's just add 20 sins for this being say the line, Bart, the movie, and move on. Hide me. I've been at a company making a game called The Matrix. Neo would be an anagram for the one at CinemaSense. We've been checking that company for years. We screened every Thomas Anderson we found. What we didn't understand was that they could alter your DSI. Hold up. They named him Thomas frickin' Anderson and had him design a game called The Matrix and you couldn't find him in here because they... Checking notes. Changed his character skin? <laughs> Keep the loop tight. And MacGuffin the widget slants through the Neonis fraud. I need to see movement on that unspecified but important technology, people. Let's go, go, go! <laughs> they went to great lengths to keep Neo alive for 60 years, but now they're just firing missiles that could easily kill him? I can't follow any of this cut-to-death action. I think at one point I saw a sharpened sucker stick and maybe an elbow to the face. This series, even the two sequels most people don't love, has long been known for inventive and high-quality action till this entry. What in the name of Hypercut McShaky Cam is this nonsense? And no, it's not a commentary on something. Anyone in the comments that explains sins in this video by saying it's a commentary on is disinvited to the family reunion. Think perspective. Close you are, bigger it gets. Advice I gave to my college girlfriend somehow makes it into the script. Also, this works. I think I've seen this film before and I didn't like the ending. Eh, he doesn't have a side view of her head and face. He is directly across from her pod. He can maybe see her feet. These machines are designed like bugs and violently grab him by the neck and push him under the amniotic fluid before saving him instead of presenting themselves as friendly because movie has to squeeze every ounce of false tension out of us before we get bored and look at our phones. Being able to hide from squiddies this easily. As they fly around and Neo takes in all the shit, I'm reminded about the first movie and the first time he was pulled out of the Matrix and his eyes didn't work because he had never used them. But now, after not using them for 60 years in the Nutrix, he's able to see perfectly as soon as he's unplugged? What's up, Doc? Having a character named Bugs say this just because you can't. But see, they don't know you like I do. But all you know is what he wrote for you, right? You're his program inside the program. And shouldn't the Doc bots be able to interpret that coding? This Morpheus is literally a weak facsimile of the real thing, and the fact that the movie thinks we're buying into this is dumber than force hiring a director to sabotage her own intellectual property. No, I'm done fighting. Bitch, you know that's not true, and you're just adding to the length of this thing, so get your ass out there and f***ing do some kung fu! Nufius thinks the best way to help Neo's physical body would be to fight in the construct. But when Smith was beating the shit out of Neo in the first movie in the subway, plugged in Neo on the ship, was shaking and convulsing and bleeding. I know he's trying to stimulate Neo's mind in the hopes that the mind will help the body, but this is a terrible idea. <laughs> See? Also, I'd give all the sins back if this fight scene cut to the Morpheus' is fighting Neo kid scrolling on his phone and yawning. So, Neo destroys the fighting realm, maybe the construct itself, and then wakes up in his bedroom? What about his vitals? Did he use the one powers to put all his molecules back into place and hold them there? When this new version of the Matrix was uploaded, there was a purge. You keep that revenge fantasy violence porn franchise out of my Matrix. Do you think once a year WB gives its execs a green light to murder franchises with no repercussions? It would explain a lot. Also, that there was a purge is the only explanation we get for why the Oracle is gone. It's fascinatingly lazy writing. Promised peace and they gave us purge. They also pee in paradise and put up a fucking lot. Ooh, bop, bop, bop. Sequoia, but everybody calls me Seek. If your real name is Sequoia, why do they call you Seek instead of Sek? This would be like shortening Rihanna to Rai Rai instead of Riri. You knew my grandfather, Captain Roland. Hey, that's really into. Whenever you feel up for it, I've got like a million questions. That's not weird at all. But also, aren't we trying to save the fucking world or what? Jesus. What is that? An exomorphic particle codex. Oh. It gives programs access to this world. Within limits. Didn't the program Smith come into this world in human form in the original trilogy, though? I guess this is a humane way for programs to come to this world, but you make it sound all original and sh**. Morpheus. Thank you. Nito shakes hands with a tiny bot version of his mentor that he partially recreated in a modal, which is to say, Neo knocks knuckles with a naked nano knowledge neighbor not native to this narrative with nary a negative notion on the entire encounter. How does it work? Paramagnetic oscillation. Oh, f you, movie. Rejected dialogue for this moment included transelectronic positration, abso prefect nebulation, dicto vagintic speculation, and endocronomic supra frustration. Even if it were Trinity and she wanted to be free, we have no idea how to do it. Yet. 
Yet cliche. That looks real. Bio sky looks kind of like grow lights. Wait, is that a weed joke? Is there weed in the year 2247 or whatever? Did Neo ever show any signs of being a weed guy? Oh, oh wait. Apparently grow lights are for any kind of indoor plant and I've just projected myself onto this scene. <laughs> what, what is weed though? I certainly do not know. Is it just me or is this old age makeup terrible? It looks like the instruction was to make it look like Jada mixed with the William Shatner mask from Halloween. Cocoon 3, Jada. I'm looking forward to it. But just to be clear, that's not a joke about Jada at all. Just about the makeup department. I wouldn't want to get slapped with a lawsuit. Transfer your access codes. You are done, Captain. Oh no, I can't believe she lost her. Uh, I don't really give much of a sh She'll be back. Nothing matters. Zion was stuck in the past. Stuck in war. I don't know, they had all those engines to keep the city running and the peace mosh pits. You grew a strawberry and suddenly you're enlightened. I'm sure the overcandling here is the entire point, but who was maintaining this and why are they 15 feet tall? Nothing can breed violence like scarcity. Or oppression, or dictatorships, or racism and genocide, sporting events in Vancouver. Man, a lot of things breed violence as well as or better than scarcity. Neo gets in prison, goes to his balcony, and is immediately rescued. Padding the runtime called, and it's filing suit for impersonation. General Jada Smith watches the escaped Neo and company take off, and she does nothing. This will be important in a few minutes when she inexplicably sends forces after them to bring them all back to Io. Huh, it looks like the mirror reflection is of this hotel room we see on the right, but the reflections table has a chair in the wrong place and a full bouquet of orange flowers, while the right has a chair way out of sight and a single flower in the centerpiece. I guess they're hoping people will be distracted by that Eiffel Tower, but there are loads of differences here that I could go on for days about. Predictable as ever. Oh hey, not quite Agent Smith. It's been like an hour. You good? Just chilling in the Matrix, waiting for Neo to come back so the movie can once again wash, rinse, and repeat? At least the movie isn't forcing some sort of Merovingian reference. It is you! Well, sh As with Morpheus, there is zero reason why this should be played by a new actor, other than, again, scheduling difficulties, which just means money. Easy to see how Jonathan Groff, bless him, is cheaper than Hugo Weaving is at this point, no? All you have to do is stay out of the Matrix and leave the good doctor to me. Somehow in the last 60 years, Smith has grown more angry at the analyst, who is just a new architect, than Neo, which is surprising considering Neo is the one who beat his ass multiple times over multiple films. What the Merv is trying to say is- The Merv? The Merv? What the f*** is this movie and can we get to the part where the knee and the trin finally get back together? Sure, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Not sure exactly what, but people seem to be occasionally shaky cam hitting each other while the feral Vingian is shouting things like suck my silky ass and couch flicks climatey wiki piss and sh**. And honestly, what more does a Matrix fan really need? Originality mattered! The guy yelling originality mattered is from the sequel to the first Matrix film, and that, perhaps, is everything wrong with this movie. It wants to say whatever it wants about itself, even if it contradicts previous films, and then get all bulletproof if someone dares to question the official narrative. I still know Kung Fu. While Neo fights Smith inside the Matrix, I'm still wondering about how he takes all these hits without suffering back at the ship in human form. You know, like he did even when Morpheus was kind of pretend fighting him. He's a hundred years old, goddammit, and this movie just wants me to forget that sh whenever it's convenient. Wait, who are these people Bugs is fighting? Wait, it doesn't matter? Carry on then. Did Neo just generate a force field? Why are there force fields all of a sudden, and more importantly, why would he ever stop generating them? Trinity's new tricks vocation is motorcycle builder repairer, and like everything else in this film, it's a little on the nose. Imagine if Neo found her and she was a cupcake decorator, and then Neo could be all like, cupcakes, whoa. I don't have a lot of time. Cool, skip. Old Dr. Hauser using this bullet time nonsense to slow down Neo is certainly bullshit. But did it have to look like actual sh** too? What's up with this janky low frame rate crap? Why does this movie want everything to look worse? Did you know hope and despair are nearly identical in code? This movie is full of these little pearls of not wisdom that it thinks are super deep but are really just nonsense. Did you know that anxiety is the only cure for comfort? Did you know that an evil bear and a gentle bear share almost all the same atoms? And the director said, yeah, sure, the character has been evil monologuing for the last five minutes and blatantly torturing our protagonist, but just in case people were still wondering if he's truly an asshole, let's do the whole apple biting thing because I'd hate for anything in this movie to be subtle. You and her quietly yearning for what you don't have. I guess he thinks he can just reboot them or something, but even so, why give this whole I win, I'm better than you speech detailing your whole plan?
If you do reboot them, then no one will ever remember this speech, making it even stupider. It's so odd to me that the first three movies went out of their way to make the city in the Matrix seem like any city or every city. But in the fourth movie, they were all like, well, let's just do San Francisco. They call that a choice. We get it already. Choice is an illusion. This is like the fourth time you've said it already, and I'm still no closer to understanding why you don't have enough exomorphic particles to complete the back of your head. Did the exomorphic factory run short on them? And we're back in I.O. This movie is playing f***ing hopscotch. Which she exercised with her own particular brand of short-sighted stupidity. Do you think they cut a bunch of stuff, maybe? I can't for the life of me understand why she was wistfully hoping for the best as she watched them fly away yesterday, but now she's all pissed off about it. The locations aren't the only part of this movie playing hopscotch. My father designed the resurrection pods where Neo and Trinity were imprisoned. No! Wait, do I care about that? A few hours ago. Say, is that bug standing there at attention receiving this military mission briefing? Didn't you demote her and there was going to be a court-martial, I think, right? I love how discipline only really matters in times of peace. I need two more. Are you out of your minds? You don't even know what it is. You're the one that asked for two volunteers without giving the mission details first. The passages used to rescue Neo are now sealed. The machines had only left them unsealed for something they referred to as the plot-induced exhaust port corollary. We don't know exactly what it means, but we will have to think of a new and exciting rescue for what we're temporarily calling the third act. In order to unplug Trinity's body while her mind still remains connected to the Matrix, I'm gonna need a second human brain to implement the bypass. Whatever, dude. Just get on with it. My other favorite part is how the machines are like, oh no, Neo escaped. I bet he's coming back for Trinity. Seal off his escape routes and post a bunch of sentinels by the tower. But that whole area right next to Trinity, keep that surveillance free. Wouldn't want to overdo it. This is where it gets tricky. Using the cords and tentacles to strategically cover the specific parts of the human body our culture has deemed inappropriate? Yep, super tricky. I don't think it's very fair that Neo has to try and explain everything to Trinity and give her a choice while a hundred heavily armed FBI and SWAT guys all stand around eavesdropping. Seek, this is loco! Lies, lies, and more lies. Smith? Yep, because Smith can apparently operate in the analyst's bullet time when Neo can't, and also just happens to be here at the exact moment Neo needs saving for a Smithius Ex Machina. Sure, why not? If the goal for the movie was to create the most confusing and indecipherable action scene possible, I'd say they hit the jackpot when they landed on Mosh Pit with Guns. Nicely done! Making this movie all about Neo and Trinity's love was a mistake. Neo and Trinity's relationship was always the blandest storyline in the original films, while Neo vs. Smith never failed to crackle. This movie puts the boring storyline up front and basically makes Smith an ally! There's subverting expectations, and then there's just sh in the bed. I don't suppose he can still fly? <gasps> yeah, that's not happening. Does this movie want to give any reasoning for why things are or aren't happening? Or are we just supposed to laugh at this projectile dysfunction joke and move on? And if so, sorry about forgetting to do the laugh part. How is she? Life signs are good. What? When they unplugged Neo, he was near death immediately, and he had to go fight Morpheus at a fake dojo to get his mojo back, which somehow then kept his hundred-year-old body together. No one will be seated while the Matrix 4 goes full Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> so Neo is Force-sensitive then? But again, how? The least the movie could have done is give us a training montage with Obi-Wan Niobe. I'm not going to show it to you, so here's a picture of the Catrix poster while we chat, but the movie will now enter a section that's one of the most tone-deaf scenes in all of film, as a technicality allows the movie to have hundreds of people hurl themselves out windows and off buildings, triggering everyone from folks with suicidal ideation to people still grappling with post-9-11 PTSD to survivors of suicide victims and more. The Wachowskis deserve a lot of praise for the inclusivity of different races and sexualities in their films, but between this and Cloud Atlas, it's beginning to look like they have a blind spot to the issue of suicidal imagery. It is nighttime when they enter this building, but full-on dawn when they exit to the roof. That's not how the sun works. Why are they shooting at Neo? The analyst wants them alive, no? Or has he switched to, if I can't have them, no one can? This whole scene just plays like two kids playing with toys. I wouldn't be surprised if we cut to one of them shouting, well, oh, I brought my helicopters, the deep fourth field dogs. Cool, awesome, beautiful, love it. Wow, but, um... How? Okay, so he was gonna fall, but Trinity is the one now and can fly, so she saved him. But earlier in the movie, Bugs said she saw Neo jump off a building and he did not fall. So why is he falling now? We were on our way to remake your world. But can't the machines just, like, flash the firmware or power it off and back on or something? This is all a software construct still, right? I'm all for the Trinio Union, but I have no idea how any of this helps either the real world or the long-term viability of the Matrix. It's almost like, to sort it all out, they will need some... Sequoias! Sequoias! They need to plant some sequoias, is all I meant. 
Please don't make more movies. As Neo and Trinity fly into the sky, exactly like Neo at the end of the first film, it's important to note that while I have sinned all the excessive callbacks to the first three movies, I will still sin the fact that they somehow couldn't get a Rage Against the Machine song to end this movie. Well, it's a Rage song, but it's a f***ing cover of what you asked. The same f***ing song that ended the first movie. God damn. What we need is a series of videos that we call the Cat Tricks. They actually filmed this. Also, holy f***. This movie is two and a half hours long. Again. Again. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. It's way too easy to forget to take care of your mental health. If you're feeling like you need to speak to someone or you just need a mental health check-in, BetterHelp is an amazing online resource that allows you to do just that. Connect with a therapist in a safe and secure online environment. And know that this isn't self-help. This is a real connection with an actual human being. And you don't even have to put on outside pants to do it. Pajama bottoms or sweats are just fine with BetterHelp. I know it can be easier to receive counseling without the need to go into an unfamiliar environment. And it's not just structured appointments. You can send messages to your therapist anytime, check out information that's relevant to your needs and book your next appointment all on the same page. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. Head to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins to answer a few questions and get paired up with a therapist within 24 hours. Get a whole 10% off your first month by clicking that link. Join over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. I am Khan. What a beautiful day to be alive, am I right? Problemo? No problemo. I need a coffee. Put that coffee down. Oh, rubber ducky, you're the one. Life insurance. Bingo was his name. All right, you want me to check him out? And from way up here, you all look like little ants. But it wasn't a dream. It was a place. And you, and you, and you, and you were there. Do or do not. There is no try. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? You never appreciated our relationship. You think you're my greatest enemy? Yes! You're obsessed with me! <laughs> no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are! Who else drives you to one-up them the way that I do? Bane. We can't go back. We have to go back, Kate. The sheeple aren't going anywhere. They like my world. They don't want this sentimentality. They don't want freedom or empowerment. You want to be fooled.